And good evening, everyone. Welcome back inside the law. I'm your host, Philip Holloway. Tonight, we're going to take a rather in depth look at a lawsuit filed by the Merchant Law Firm PC, which, of course, is Ashley Merchant's law firm. She had to sue and is suing, I guess, uh, the Fulton County DA's office in Fulton County over uh, what they say are violations of Georgia's open records law as it pertains to Ashley's now famous quest to uncover information regarding how the district attorney's office spends its money and on whom and in what way. Before we get into that, I wanted to take just a minute to, I want to share with you, well, just take a look for yourself. This is uh, something that someone uh, named Rob forwarded to me, and I posted it on my ex uh, Twitter feed here. It, this is uh, apparently the Fannie Willis campaign text. And as I point out, apparently the words attacked and over-sexualized and uh, stand in solidarity with black women in positions of power. These things have apparently been poll tested as effective, it seems. And uh, let's just take a look at this. It says, this is Fulton County DA, Bonnie Willis. And I just said something I needed to get off my chest. Too often in America, black women, especially those of us put into positions of power by the people, are attacked and over-sexualized just for doing the job we were elected to do. As I continue to do my job and seek re-election in 2024 as Fulton County District Attorney amid disingenuous attacks from the right-wing media, harassment, and regular death threats, I do sometimes stop and wonder, would all of this abuse and vitriol be coming my way if I were a white man? Rob, I need to know. Can I count on you to help me stand up to these daily attacks in my re-election fight against a right-wing opponent? If you will stand with me and stand in solidarity with black women in positions of power, please donate any amount here. And you can see there in that link, essentially it says, protect black women. This is the state of the campaign for the district attorney's office here in Atlanta, Georgia. So here we go. Let's go ahead and bring up, if we can, the lawsuit. And this thing is well over, the whole thing is over 100 pages long, but the relevant portions of it are not. So that's the good news. This is a lawsuit filed in the Superior Court of Fulton County. And, and by the way, one of the reasons that I'm doing this now is later this month, I think it's on the 25th, there is going to be a court hearing in Fulton County on this lawsuit. Okay. And so this lawsuit explains a lot of what Ashley Merchant did when she was investigating the you know, the allegations, which of course proved to be true, that Willis was having the affair with her paramour, uh, Nathan Wade. And the allegations were, of course, that, that she personally benefited monetarily by virtue of him spending some of the money that he was being paid to take her all around the world on romantic getaways and, and that sort of thing. So it was a conflict of interest. And that, of course, is now the basis of the appeal that's pending before the Georgia Court of Appeals, whereby the uh, you know six or seven of the defendants are seeking to have Willis disqualified and removed uh, from the case. And in fact, they're seeking to have the entire indictment dismissed on the basis of the conflict of interest. So this provides some interesting backstory, but it's also relevant because we've got a court hearing that's coming up. All right. So this is the Superior Court of Fulton County. And we have the plaintiff is the Merchant Law Firm PC. That's the business entity that she operates out of against the Fulton County DA's office. And it's called a complaint for violation of Georgia's Open Records Act and motion for defendant to show cause. The introduction here says the Georgia's, Georgia's Open Records Act is the important mechanism by which citizens of Georgia are able to evaluate their government's use of resources, and that includes prosecutors. They are the government. The Georgia General Assembly explained the purpose of the act. The General Assembly finds and declares that the strong public policy of this state is in favor of open government and that open government is essential to a free, open, and democratic society, and that public access to public records should be encouraged to foster confidence in government and so that the public can evaluate the expenditure of public funds 
and the efficient and proper functioning of its institutions. This article shall be broadly construed to allow the inspection of government records. Let me pause just a second. Do you think that the money that's paid by a district attorney when, when she uses a no-bid contract and gives one of those no-bid contracts to her lover, paying him orders of magnitude more money than the assistant district attorneys who are the full-time uh, employees and criminal lawyers employed by the DA's office. Do you think that that is a type of expenditure of public money that the public would have some interest in? I think so. And I think that's why this is all so relevant. They point out that the public policy behind the act is to encourage transparency in government. They point out that DA Willis has made public statements indicating that she would lead the DA's office with a stated goal of being transparent with the citizenry. The DA has denied plaintiff the right to inspect a number of Fulton County DA records. Some of these would include reports provided to the Fulton County DA by third-party media companies that were hired with taxpayer funds to track the impact of Ms. Willis' statements to the media and whether such statements were viewed favorably by the public. Ms. Willis first began contracting with these companies just immediately before the DA sought to investigate and indict Mr. Roman and the other co-defendants. Of course, Mr. Roman is Ashley Merchant's client, so that's why she speaks of him. So what this is about, this piece of it, when, when all of this started happening, we had the special purpose grand jury first, and of course, that generated a lot of media attention. And so they literally hired this company. They contracted with this company to monitor her media presence, to basically track how fast and how far and how high, I should say, her star was rising in the media. And so this was apparently something that was actively being tracked by not only Willis, but others in senior management there at the DA's office. Because after all, it's not just about getting Trump. It's about making sure that her star rises high enough and fast enough because there's got to be something bigger in her political future. So she may as well start planning for it now. As more fully shown below, the DA is in clear violation of the act and appears to be intentionally withholding information in advance of scheduled evidentiary hearings in two separate proceedings. And here they're talking about the motion hearings on the, the motions to disqualify. This lawsuit was filed before that. We just haven't had any hearings on it yet. It says that they appear to be intentionally withholding information in advance of scheduled evidentiary hearings in two separate proceedings and has forced the plaintiff to take action through this filing to obtain relief. These are not the efforts of an agency that values transparency, and the plaintiff requests that the court grant the relief requested and find that the DA must permit inspection and copying of numerous categories of documents that still have not been made available to the plaintiff. It is evident that the DA has withheld records without justification under the, under the open record statute. We can skip talking about jurisdiction and venue, but it is important, like they stated here in paragraph 10, each of the records sought by plaintiff in this action is considered a public record. So we're not dealing with confidential things. We're not dealing with like Brian Steele's notes that they, that they tried to snatch away from him in court the other day. We're talking about public records. Um, they point out that the plaintiff is a Georgia corporation and the defendant is the county and all of its uh, agencies, et cetera, including the DA's office. All right. The factual background. I apologize if I'm going to do my best to not get too much into the weeds here and it's not my intention to just read this stuff to you. You can read it on your own, but but some of it is absolutely critical to talk about it and to do it right. We've just got to dive in here. So she represents Michael Roman, who's one of the defendants, and the evidentiary hearing was scheduled for April 15th of 2024 on Mr. Roman's motion to dismiss the indictment and, and to disqualify the DA and the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, from further prosecuting Mr. Roman in that case. Roman has asserted that Willis and Wade should be disqualified because Willis used taxpayer money to pay Wade, with whom she has had a romantic relationship at the time and, in turn, has received financial benefits from such payments in the form of vacations, hotel stays, and other personal gifts. Roman believes that Willis' use of money budgeted to the DA is of utmost importance in evaluating whether Willis and Wade 
have an irreparable and fatal conflict of interest and whether and to what extent Willis has otherwise used public monies for her personal gain. In an effort to intentionally stall plaintiff's inspection of various categories of documents prior to the evidentiary hearing, the DA has refused without adequate explanation to provide the plaintiff with many of the requested materials that are known to exist. You see that? She says that she she knows they exist. She's not just making this up. And she says that they're not subject to any exception to the act that would otherwise keep them from being something that had to be turned over under the open records laws. In paragraph 19, they point out that on September 1st, as a matter of fact, of 2023, Ashley Merchant requested certain public records from the Fulton DA's office. She used the public records center electronic portal. This was some type of online system that Fulton County used, and it was assigned the various request number. The September 1st request saw any and all bids, contracts, or agreements for the appointment and payment of the following contract. The law offices of Nathan Wade, Christopher Campbell, PC, Cross Firm, LLC, Anna Cross, uh, that's one of the other special prosecutors, Bondurant, Mixon, and Elmore, LLP, which is a law firm, and one Terrence Bradley. Most of these are people that we've talked about before, and you're probably familiar with them. She says here specifically, I am seeking their invoices, contracts, county approval of these vendors, and any other documents regarding the contracting and payment of these vendors. Plaintiff did not receive any documents within three business days. And by the way, that's what the Open Records Act requires, is that a response be given within three business days. You don't have a lot of time if you're the government to sit on these things. And if you and if you fail to comply with this, the Open Records Law allows you to do just this, bring a lawsuit, try to deal with it. There were no legal exceptions asserted by Fulton County. So on September September 7th, Ms. Merchant followed up to inquire when the documents would be available. She followed up again on September 11th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Despite not providing numerous invoices and other documents in response to the September 1st request or any reason for failing to do so on September 17th, listen to this, guys, the county just closed the request without responding to it at all. They simply just closed the request. So on January 24th, 2024, she had to refile her request for agreements and contracts set forth the same thing she asked for September 1st. And, if, and by the way, if you need a flow chart, you're not, you're not alone. I mean, they, this is, this is something else here. The obfuscation by the County. She refiled everything, everything that she was asking for originally back in September it says they attached a copy of the September 1st request. This request also sought anything that was newly created since September 1st that would have been responsive to the request. Again, did not receive any response. So she followed up again on January 12th and January 16th, 2024. And, and she's getting close, by the way, to this looming big hearing, the one that we all watched, you know, that was so dramatic that, you know, when Fannie Willis busted in like a wildcat with her tail on fire, demanding to testify after she had filed a motion to quash her subpoena, but I guess she gave up on it because she was mad that she was watching Nathan Wade be cross-examined. So she busted in so she could take the stand in that pink dress and call Ashley Merchant a liar. Yeah, that hearing. It had been now more than three months since the September 1st request. And on January 22nd, 2024, Fulton County responded that, quote, your request has been forwarded to the appropriate department and the time extended to accommodate the appropriate department. Mind you, I don't know that there's any basis in law for them to just unilaterally extend the time, but that's what the response was. Please see attached letter. This request has been extended. Fulton County, <laughs> once again, they closed the request. They closed the request again on January 29th and referred her to see the September 1st original request. In the footnote here, they point out that Fulton County's action in prematurely closing the request and forcing Ms. Merchant to refile the request under new request numbers made the request process unnecessarily confusing and burdensome. Yeah, yeah, you think? One can only assume this was done intentionally with the hope that Ms. Merchant would simply accept that the request had been closed and go away. Thankfully, she did not because it is evident that numerous additional responsive documents were, in fact, in possession of the Fulton DA's office and had not been provided. The open records process itself appears designed to, I think she, they're referring to the process in Fulton County, appears designed to deter Georgia citizens from accessing public records, and it flies in the face of the transparency and the openness that the 
Open Records Act requires. On January 14th of 2023, Ashley Merchant had to file yet another request associated with the September 1st request because the prior request had been prematurely closed. The new request had a different number. Four days later, on January 18th, Fulton County responded, please log into the portal and see responsive document. That response provided only one contract for John Floyd, and then they closed the request. They closed it out. They did not provide any of the documents that were asked for except for one contract for one of the other prosecutors, John Floyd. And then they just closed it. So finally, on January 29th, Fulton County wrote in the records portal with regard to the original. Now, they're going back to the original September 1st request. And they say, please log into the portal to see the attached documents, see Exhibit A to this lawsuit. And they point out here that numerous documents were provided in this response, but numerous documents were still outstanding. To date, the following items remain outstanding under these requests, which have been pending for almost five months. And the statute says you've got three days. And here they are five months later. And this was as of when this lawsuit was filed. That was four or five months ago. Invoices for July 2023 through December 2023, despite Nathan Wade having received payments for those months. Invoices for Terrence Bradley and across his current contract as the contract provided to Ms. Merchant had ended on June 30th, 2023. Current invoices for Anna Cross Her last invoice is from October 2023. And John Floyd's current contract, the contract provided for Mr. Floyd, had ended in October 2022. So what they're doing is they're slow walking this in the extreme, and they're just giving her a little bit here and there, and in some cases, maybe nothing, and just closing out these open records requests. So here in paragraph 24, when a lawyer says, upon information and belief, what the lawyer is saying is that they have a good faith basis for what they're about to say. The author of this complaint, by the way, is Ashley's husband, John Merchant. So what John is saying is that upon information and belief, he's got a good faith belief for stating that the documents sought in the September 1st, that's the original request, and all of the follow-up requests thereafter for the same documents were in fact in the possession of the DA. And he says they were intentionally withheld by the DA because the undersigned counsel filed a motion to disqualify Willis and Wade. And there has been considerable news coverage. You see where we're getting at? There have been considerable news coverage of the financial arrangements between Willis and Wade. As shown below, a letter from the Fulton County DA's office confirms that the stonewalling continues. On September 15th, 2023, Ms. Merchant requested a different set of records from those sought in the September 1st request. So here we're looking at something different. Fulton County assigned this request a different number, so they're just going to call it the September 15th request, and it's attached to this lawsuit. And it was looking for copies of the monthly CARES Act reports for the DA's office, showing how the CARES Act money was spent. This is COVID relief stuff, right? COVID relief money we're talking about. They want records showing how the CARES Act money was spent each month. On September 19th, the DA responded, quote, the Fulton County DA is in receipt of your open records request. However, after carefully reviewing your request, unfortunately, we do not have the responsive records. Now, does anybody believe that? Does that have the odor of mendacity itself? I mean, it's just everywhere. Upon information and belief, the DA and Willis are required by law to maintain records regarding the use of CARES Act monies received pursuant to federal ARPA grant funding. That's the American Rescue Plan. As a result, Fulton County DA and Willis should have records showing how those funds were spent. Nevertheless, and in addition to the other response, the DA responded, quote, in its normal course of business, they do not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records you seek. Does anybody believe that? There's just no way that could possibly be true. January 8th, 2024, Another request, Ms. Merchant separately submitted the following through the open records portal. Quote, I am seeking personnel records. I am requesting a list of all attorneys with their names and their dates of hiring that were hired by the DA since Ms. Willis became DA, including the date hired. Now, before I go any further, a lot of you people may have worked in human resources at some point in your life. If not, you've interacted with human resources. You've had jobs. You've hired people. You know good and well when you hire an employee, particularly if you're going to work for the government, there is records of that hiring. There's records of payroll. There's records of resumes. There's all kinds of records that are associated with hiring of personnel. 
And when you're talking about looking at two or three years at the largest DA's office in the state of Georgia, you know they've got personnel records, don't you? They have to. Let's see what they have to say about that. So 10 days later, on January 18th, the DA responded, please log into the portal to see responsive letter. No responsive records? This office and its normal course of business does not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records that you seek. They're saying that they don't keep records of the people that they hire. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This request was sent because Willis had made a presentation to the Fulton County Board of Commissioners in 2021. She made a big production, guys. Uh, she had a PowerPoint and everything talking about how she needed all this money from all this COVID relief money, by the way, to clear up the backlog. She had to hire all these new people to clear up the COVID backlog. And the idea of what they're getting at here is that instead of using it to hire personnel to clear up the COVID backlog, they're using it to fund this racketeering case and this racketeering investigation and paying Nathan Wade and so on and so forth. So this request was sent because Willis made a presentation to the Fulton County Board of Commissioners asking for additional funding to hire lawyers and staff to assist in the clearing of the backlog of cases due to the COVID pandemic. If that was true in 2021, Ms. Willis did indeed hire lawyers and staff with the funding granted to her. There should be records relating to the new hires over the past three years. Well, of course there should be. Of course there are. So on January 8th, 2024, another request says, Mr. Ms. Mercer requested a copy of any and all documents, agreements, contracts, memos, written documents that employees, staff, or independent contractors of the DA's office have been required to sign regarding speaking to the media and or confidentiality. We're talking about non-disclosure agreements, otherwise known as Hush money agreements. On January 9th, 2024, Fulton County acknowledged receipt of this second January 8th request, but then responded 10 days later, of course, which is well beyond three days as the law requires. Here's the response. Please allow 10 business days for a response. To date, Ms. Merchant has not received any further response through the portal, but on January 26th, the DA's office said, in the normal course of business, we do not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records you seek. Just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Upon information and belief, the DA issued a statement to the news media that the NDAs did exist, but they were later retracted. So the DA issued a statement that the hush money contracts did exist. All right. On January 9th, 2024, another request. Ms. Merchant sought, quote, a copy of any and all correspondence to or from vendor Critical Mention Incorporated. Critical Mention Incorporated is the media monitoring company at the beginning of this live stream, we were talking about Miss Willis, and she had hired this media monitoring company to monitor how high and how fast her media star was rising. They paid tens of thousands of taxpayer dollars for this purpose, and they started paying them just before this RICO case started. So it's all coming together that this is this was some kind of coordinated plan that she was going to work the media angle just as much as she possibly could to try to get the very best possible press because she knew this was going to make a splash in the media. So Ashley's trying to get correspondence to and or from vendor critical mention incorporated, including copies of contracts or payments and all analytics and or reports from critical mention to any member of the DA's office. So she's wanting the payments made to critical mention and she's wanting the reports that critical mention provided to the DA's office showing how high and how fast Fannie Willis' star was rising. So that's what that's all about. And on January 12th, 2024, she made clear she was asking for, quote, the analytics that were provided by Critical Mention. The contract is for media monitoring and analytical reports are provided in response to this contract. And we asked in our open records request for those as well. On January 18th, 10 days after the original request, the DA provided some emails that make it clear that the DA used funds to contract with Critical Mention to monitor the media presence of Willis. Those emails contained attachments, which were the very reports that they were looking for. But guess what? The reports were not provided, simply the emails, but not the attachments. And then guess what? They closed the request before it was fulfilled. With, with regard to this media monitoring situation, so like, for example, with this 
with this channel of mine with inside the law, I have certain reports that I can look at. I can see the analytics. I can see the metrics. I can see what's working, what's not working. And I use it to make changes to hopefully bring you a better product. But I use these analytics to try to do better every time and to try to not repeat something that's not working or to try to do repeat something that is working. And so they were doing the same thing here with this media monitoring company. They wanted to see what Willis was doing that, that went well, what didn't go so well so that she could, again, make sure her star would rise as high and fast as possible using taxpayer money to do it. That's what it's all about. 29. As a result, this forced Miss Merchant on January 18th, 2024 to refile the January 9th request. The refile January 9th request is attached to this lawsuit. She specifically states that she sought, quote, the analytics and documents that are clearly referenced and attached to those emails. She also noted that it appears from the emails that Jeff DeSantis, Fanny Willis, Jeremy Murray, and Pallavi Urkayasha, I'm sure I mangled that, or Robin Bryant and Rita Kepler may all have accessed those reports on a regular basis. These reports are of public media and are paid for by public funds and subject to open records. The DA responded by stating, relates to the records you seek, this office in its normal course of business does not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records you seek. As it relates to your request to view electronic communications, your request as written is not reasonably calculated to locate the records you seek. Does that sound like a bunch of gobbledygook? It is. And by the way, they're, they're literally saying they can't produce the records you seek because they don't maintain those records, even though they've already provided her the emails showing that they actually have the records. It's the blind leading the blind. And it's so dishonest. It's just stunning. Since the Fulton County DA provided the emails that contain the attachments, the emails and the attachments are, well, that's what I just said. They're obviously kept in the ordinary course of the DA's business, so it's not clear why the attachments and other responsive materials have not been provided. Also, Ms. Merchant has never requested to view electronic communications, so the basis for withholding the documents without merit appears designed to keep Ms. Merchant and the public from seeing the contents of the reports and other data provided by critical mention. Neither Fulton County DA nor the Fulton County itself provided any legal objection to producing the requested documents within three business days as required by law, so they have waived any right to withhold the documents on any stated basis. Merchant resubmitted open records request, the January 14th request, which sought any and all contracts, agreements, vendor documents, communications between any county entity and a vendor called TV Eyes Incorporated. TV Eyes Incorporated is another company that provides analytics similar to critical mention. So in response to that, they finally said, your request is being reassigned to the district attorney's office for response. I mean, this is this just the runaround? I mean, the, she's literally getting the runaround from everybody at every turn. On January 25th of 24, the county stated, please log into the portal to review the letter attached. And it says, this request has been extended. Neither Fulton County nor the DA has ever provided any documents in response to the January 14th request. So it, so this request remains outstanding, even though it's now several weeks old. Remember, folks, the law says they've got to provide these records within three business days. You know, it ought to be a crime, by the way, to violate Open Records Act in such a way. On January 16th, 2024, Ms. Merchant submitted open records requests, um, which requested a copy of any and all vacation. Here we go. Vacation or time off requests for Fannie Willis from January 1st, 2022 until the current day. Merchant was told that it would take 10 business days. Therefore, responsive documents should have been provided by, according to that timeline, January 26. However, on January 26, the DA's office said, in its normal course of business, does not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records you seek. Gobbledygook. More of it. On January 16, 2024, at 126 p.m., Ms. Merchant requested reports and itemization that was required by law to be submitted to the county as the local governing authority showing what was done with, this is important, all property and funds obtained through asset forfeiture, including reports showing where the funds were spent and who was paid. Yes, it is very true. They have to keep up with that stuff. They have to account for it to 
the PIMI. On January 26, 2024, 10 days after the request was submitted, the DA responded that responsive records are attached. And, and they noted that we believe that you're seeking the office's equitable sharing agreement and certificate. Nope, that's not what she was looking for. So they gave her the wrong stuff. They gave her some document she didn't ask for, and they pretended to have complied with it. Ms. Merchant was not seeking the equitable sharing agreement, but was instead seeking records of the forfeiture fund accounting for the funds used to pay independent contractors Nathan Wade and Anna Cross. See, they're paying Wade and Cross, according to this lawsuit, out of seized asset forfeiture funds. And that could be a problem. Wade was paid on July 15th, 2022, August 12th, 2022, September 23rd, 2022, from unit name Confiscated Funds. The fund was seized property dash law enforcement under code 440. Cross was also paid out of the same fund on two different dates. The DA has not provided any further documentation in connection with the first January 16th request. You see where this is going, folks? Look, what we're seeing here is we are seeing just obfuscation after probably lie after another obfuscation after another lie, all designed purposely, I think, to keep her from finding out the truth about all this. Now, remember, what is the base? If you, if you look at this racketeering RICO case, what is the basis for it? Really, at its very heart, she's alleging that that people, Donald Trump and others, made false claims, and that at the core of this racketeering case is false claims about the election. Not only, notwithstanding the probable, likely, definitely, one hundred percent certain false testimony that was given in court and the odor of mendacity, we probably have some false statements made here in connection with these open records requests. I mean, the hypocrisy knows no bounds. January 17th, Merchant requested copies of travel reimbursements, requests for reimbursements, communications regarding and proof of reimbursements for Fannie Willis for the purpose of period 2020 through the present. On January 26th, the DA's office responded that in its normal course of business does not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records you seek. All right. So on January 17th, 2024, she asked for any and all correspondence communication between purchasing and the DA's office. That would be the county purchasing office and the DA's office for 2021 until the present regarding outside counsel. That's Wade, including payments, requests for payments, and the process for hiring and bids, if any. Of course, we now know this is all no bid contract. And Basically, she wanted documents dealing with the process for hiring and paying outside counsel. Merchant specifically referenced this to include, quote, the referenced retraining of the district attorney to include the referenced retraining of the DA by purchasing, purchasing department that was discussed during the Board of Commissioners meeting in November 2023. Again, the response in the normal course of business does not maintain responsive records. As such, we cannot produce the records you seek. It's like a broken record down there. In January of 2024, in order to summarize all of the outstanding pending requests, missing documents, and materials, Ashley Merchant sent a letter to both Fulton County and the DA asking that all pending requests please be resolved and documents produced by the close of business on January 26, 2024. Apparently, in response, the DA sent its January 26 letter, but failed nonetheless to provide most of the requested documents. At no time prior to three business days following receipt of any of the above requests, did the DA raise any legal objection, cite any exception that would apply for failing to provide the requested documents or otherwise provide justification for failing to provide responsive documents. And here we go into the specific counts of the lawsuit now in the Open Records Act. Uh, again, they point out all public records shall be open for personal inspection and copying, except those by which by order of a court of this state or by law are specifically exempted from disclosure. And again, they never cited any legal exemption from disclosure. Under the law, the agency shall, doesn't say may, it says shall produce for inspection all records responsive to the request within a reasonable amount of time, but not to exceed three business days. Can you see how far outside the bounds of the law the DA's office is here? I mean, we are not anywhere close to being in compliance with this statute. It says an agency's use of electronic record keeping systems must not erode the public's right of access to records under the act. 
agencies shall produce electronic copies of, or if the requester prefers, printouts of electronic records or data from database fields that the agency maintains using computer programs that the agency has in its possession. Defendant has failed to properly and timely respond to the plaintiff's request under the Open Records Act. None of the records sought from the defendant are subject to any exception. Defendant has refused to provide plaintiff access to those records for an unreasonable amount of time and without a proper legal basis. Defendant has no legal basis to withhold responsive documents. Defendant is acting intentionally and in an effort to hide from public view documents showing how the Fulton County DA has spent public monies related to the operation of the office of the Fulton County DA. Defendant is in possession of additional documents and materials that are responsive and which are not subject to any exception, but nonetheless have not been produced. Defendant has acted in violation of the act without justification and continues to act in violation of the act without justification and will continue to act in violation of the, of the law unless the court intervenes to compel defendant's compliance. So the plaintiff's asking the court for an order compelling the DA to produce all the records for an in-camera, that means in-chambers inspection, and to appear before the court and show cause why the requested relief should not be granted in stanter. That means immediately. The exhibits to this are basically copies of the printouts from their portal that you can see where it says status here. Look at this one. This is the first one, like complete records released when, of course, we know that they weren't. But there's a letter that I, I think is important. We don't have to go through all of these emails. There's a letter that they referenced all right, so here we go. January 26, 2024. The office of the Fulton DA has received your letter dated August 24th. Well, that can't be right because the letter was written January 26, 2024. They must have, they must mean January 20. So it's a typo. The office of the DA has received your letter dated uh, what looks like it should be January 24th, 2024. Despite consistent communication, you imply that this office has failed to meet its obligation under Georgia's Open Records Act. No, I don't think they're implying anything. I think they're outright saying it. We respectfully disagree with your disingenuous implication. They're calling her a liar again. As you're aware, the Open Records Act requires a public entity to make county records available for inspection, et cetera, and so forth. They summarize the responses basically that we just went through that were part of this lawsuit that really were not proper responses. See, like, for example, they refer to their response here that Fulton County District Attorney in its normal course of business does not maintain responsive records as such. We cannot produce the records that you seek. Speaking of records, they're like a broken one. Always the same thing. And then I thought that somebody was going to have the wherewithal to sign this, but they just said, sincerely, open records. Doesn't even have a person's name on it. They want to call her a liar, but don't even have the decency to put a name to that letter. They do at the top of the letter, though. It does have Fannie Willis's name, so she's ultimately responsible for all of this. I mean, that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the backstory. And we know that Ashley Merchant, nevertheless, got a lot of the information she was looking for because she, of course, had a great hearing uh, and, and well, series of hearings, I guess, that led to the odor of mendacity order that said that Willis had acted improperly, but that she didn't have to completely recuse her office if she would just let Nathan Wade go. And of course, that's the issue that's up on appeal. <laughs>